This is the highest point of our property. You can see the Ohio River really well from up here. Good morning guys. So today I need to get these rabbit hutches cleaned out. Uh, their trays empty. Um, it's been about three days or so. Anyway, I'm going to get that done and then I want to show you the baby rabbits. Our female rabbit did have her babies. She ended up having six. This is her first litter and even though she was a great mom, it was cold and she did keep the babies warm and four of them ended up passing away and then the other two survived. So I'll be showing you those in just a few minutes. But let me get these hutches cleaned out. So I tried to put the wheelbarrow up under the pen so that way when I pull these trays out, all the rabbit manure will fall into the wheelbarrow. So guys, I'm going to use gloves. I need to clean out the inside of the pen where the poop and stuff has gotten stuck in the corner. She's pulled out so much hair for her babies to where it's just getting caught in this one side. I think I got it pretty clean for the most part. Okay guys, so now I'm going to feed them and add them some hay.
guy with, with rabbits is not, they're very easy to take care of. The cleaning, uh, I can dump out their um, trays about two, two to three times a week. It will make it easier where it's not um, having to scrape it out as much or use the wheelbarrow. I could probably just pull the tray, especially for the one I have the three uh, females in. And I will eventually uh, move and have their individual pens, but that will come a little bit later. We have other things going on on the homestead that's taken a lot of our resources, so that's not a priority at this moment. These pens are, are big, they're nice, so they fit in here very well. So our mama right here, she gave birth and she had um, six babies and it was really cold at night and during the day when the babies were very little. Uh, four of them crawled away and we ended up finding them um, dead in the nesting box and we had to take those out but two did survive so I wanted to show you what they look like. how cute it is and he's so he or she's chunky so look and there's the other one they're just so adorable so we have bred her um again and she had once again it was a successful drop off three times and it happened pretty fast uh the first time we bred her it took a while it was her first time his first time but this time she was very willing and letting and it happened immediately three times pretty quickly so we were excited about that one of our other females we attempted to put in there not so much she was not ready um, he tried it didn't work i left them in there for a few hours together i didn't stay there and watch the whole entire time so i'm not sure if she got bred or not but we're gonna act as if she did so the two females got bred at the same time and we'll put a nesting box in the other one just in case if she did uh, get pregnant Okay, so we got the rabbits done, and now we need to go feed our chickens. It is super bright today. Super, super bright. So we have this one chicken that loves to get out. Uh, right now she's regretting her choice because all the good stuff is on the inside of the pen and she's trying to figure out a way to get back in. So I'm going to mix up our Idaho pasture pigs uh, feed for today. And I need to get uh, a scoop for them. But we've measured it uh, to get the four pounds that we need per day. It'll be eight of these cups. I'm 
I'm going to do two cups of the alfalfa pellets. And then their minerals, which is very important. That keeps them from rooting as much. Probably about this much. Now that I have the food, I need to let this soak in some water. They will not eat the alfalfa pellets <laughs> unless it's soaked where it just completely falls apart. So we'll have to let this soak for about an hour. That's usually what it takes. I'm gonna take you inside to the greenhouse and give you an update on that. Uh, and look at our garlic. I don't know if you can see that. It's already sprouting. Guys, look at the abundance of food in here. And the mustard that we just planted is already starting to come up which I'm super excited about that because I'm ready for some mustard. I forgot to get it when I was in South Carolina and my husband was super upset that he couldn't get some fresh mustard greens, but that's okay. I'm gonna plant some for him and we've got that coming up. So hopefully in not too, too long. So down here, we planted mustard uh, in here too. And it's coming up for the most part. Uh, we had a couple of chickens that got out and scratched in here uh, so that was uh, pretty upsetting so we just left it as it is and we were just gonna see what happens uh, we love mustard so if I could get uh, two or three meals out of this I'll be happy but it is coming up it is super bright out here <laughs> super super bright so I think we have some colder weather coming um, the end of this week so my husband he's going to be hauling water today we need to fill up our water barrel that we use for our chickens uh, our rabbits should have plenty and we have to give water to our pigs so after that we're going to add some water to our barrels we have not gotten a lot of rain uh, lately which is very unusual usually we have plenty of rain so it does make it hard uh, here we're very thankful that we have our natural spring on the property and worst if the worst case scenario we would have to go to town and there's a public area up there that we we can get water so we can haul water in here in just a little bit we're going to drive you around and we're going to show you what's happening on the homestead that we're super excited about we've been waiting four years for this it's been a very long, hard road, stressful, ups and downs, tears, and we're almost there, guys. We're gonna, we're gonna be showing you that in just a little bit. It'll be a little bit for us, but it will be very quick for you. So hopefully in the next two to three weeks, uh, we'll have this, but we're gonna be showing you in just a little bit. We're gonna be driving around and uh, showing you. So guys, if you see behind me, back here, this whole area and it goes all the way to our property so we're in the process right now of trying to get power it was really never our intent to stay off grid uh, when we came uh, here to Kentucky uh, it has been a struggle to say the least to get power here uh, four years later we finally uh, have some we had someone to clear out the trees for us we got the easement from our neighbors who are great, very nice people. Now we're just waiting on the power company to come and set the poles. We already have our service pole set up and we'll be going there next and showing you. But this is a huge, this is a huge step on our property. Uh, we've looked into solar, our location, the way the mountains set, the, how much sun we get. It wasn't a great choice for us. Plus, we couldn't get anybody to come out here uh, to let us uh, to actually come out here to 
quote us how much it would cost with solar. They said without power that they did not deal with that. Um, looking into it, I couldn't tell them how big of a, a system that I needed because we didn't never have power out here. So it just wasn't an option. So this is where it starts. And the power pole is right behind us to where they had to to start. It's almost like our property is in a, a Bermuda Triangle. It's in the middle of nowhere. It can't get anything. It's kind of weird. We're just waiting for the guy with the power company to come and mark where their guys need to lay the poles. Once that's done, we're finally going to have power and that way we can have electric fencing and things like that um, through the winter time and hopefully our animals will be safer from coyotes and such. So back behind us, we have our service pole. Um, he's already got that installed. Uh, we had him put in two receptacles right here. This is a 220. This is for a dryer. We do use clothes lines um, here on the property. Um, but there are some times we have a lot of rain <laughs> through the winter time. And we have to utilize the laundromat for that. Now, it's very expensive to go to the laundromat uh, for a lot of people. So, we decided to go ahead and add this 220 receptacle. So, that way we can make a platform or a little outbuilding. Um, not very big. Big enough just to put a dryer in. And then we have this regular outlet right here. Now this building behind us is our food storage building and we had a raccoon or something go inside of there and have caused a lot um, of damage. So through the winter time we are going to get that cleaned up and straightened up and then this way uh, with the electricity we can actually have it climate control and go through all of our jars. We have had some uh, lossage in there but um, that's okay. 
it's been a struggle. Like I said, we didn't come here originally thinking that we were going to be off grid. And with things happening and just not working our way, it just so happened for the last 40 years, that's the way it's been. So it's okay. We're getting past that. And hopefully in the next few weeks, we're going to have power. We're just waiting on the light company now. Uh, we have to get this service pole also inspected. So I'm sure that's not going to be too long. Uh, the guy that we got to do this has been super nice. And he's got it done in just a couple days from where I called and asked. Anyway, guys. Hopefully, we'll have power soon, and I want to thank everyone. If you're new here, please think about hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell, so that way you're made aware of when we make new videos. Guys, if you're returning, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Until the next one.